In the following trace, a 52-year-old male patient presents to the emergency department with this electrocardiogram. I suggest pausing the video to carefully analyze the ECG before I begin discussing it in detail. In this trace, we observe that the patient maintains a sinus rhythm, which is tachycardic with a frequency above 100. What catches our attention the most, even if we look at this electrocardiogram from a distance, is the clear alternation between the QRS complexes. We have one QRS complex that is slightly larger, and then the QRS amplitude becomes smaller, and this pattern continues throughout the entire electrocardiographic trace. This electrical alternation, especially when associated with a sinus heart attack, suggests the presence of a pericardial effusion. So we have what is called a swinging heart. It appears to be floating within the pericardial sac, which is filled with fluid. As the heart beats, it changes its position within the pericardial sac, sometimes moving away from and sometimes approaching the electrodes. This results in the observed electrical alternation or beat-to-beat -beat variation. This electrocardiogram is highly suggestive of a pericardial effusion. It's important to note that the presence of low-voltage QRS on an electrocardiogram also suggests pericardial effusion, not just electrical alternation. However, in addition to pericardial effusion, there are other causes that can lead to low-voltage QRS. Among them are artifact, meaning that during the electrocardiogram, a smaller amplitude was chosen, such as half N, where N is the normal amplitude we typically use for electrocardiographic traces. If someone accidentally reduces the gain on the device, we may see a non-pathological low-voltage QRS complex resulting from the incorrect configuration of the electrocardiogram device. Patients with Addison's disease may also present with low-voltage QRS. Anasarca as it increases the distance and impedance between the heart and the electrode's position around the thoracic cage. Patients with infiltrative cardiac diseases, such as amyloidosis or neoplasia, heart transplant recipients, patients with cardiomyopathies or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, those with constrictive pericarditis or hypothyroidism. In these cases, sinus bradycardia is usually also associated. Patients with left pneumothorax, resulting in a reduction of the amplitude of electrocardiographic signals in the left-sided leads. Patients with extensive anterior myocardial infarction, which leads to a reduction in muscle mass and consequently, the generation of the electrocardiographic impulse. Patients with acute or chronic myocarditis. Obese patients as the distance between the heart and electrodes is typically increased. Patients with pleural effusion, similar to those with pneumothorax. Lastly, as we have seen, patients with pericardial effusion or tamponade. In these cases, sinus tachycardia is generally associated with the previous electrocardiogram.